Oh, oh god. god, terrible. Projectile. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, so today's project is a board conversion, sort of. So this is Russ Martin's Vesk board. It is, oh, it's a Vesk board. It's got a super flux, big old tire, these extended rails on it. It's got a Fokker in the front with a printed case and an old style cable, torque box, meat pack in the back. This thing has so far been fine, flawless. And uh, he's done pretty well with it. And this board has quite a bit of mileage on it, I believe. How many miles, sir? We're at 3,300 now. 3,300, yes, fantastic. Sir. How long have you had it? A couple years? Uh, one year, five months. Wow, fantastic. So about a year and a half. That's a lot of mileage in a year and a half. Yeah. Good for you. Been enjoying it thoroughly. So we're gonna give it a mild internal facelift. So we're gonna try to knock this out in one day. I've already prepped what's going in it. This is the Fungineer's complete box, the cast aluminum one. So we've got this happening. I've already kind of prepped it. I prepped a new torque box with a tail light, which we'll set up in a second. And I've sort of pre-prepped, or prepped rather, the front end of this cable. This is a float box cable, the 14 core. I left it pretty long because I'm not sure exactly how long those rails are. So I didn't want to guess at cable length. So we'll figure that in a bit. And so we're going to start breaking down this board. Well, Russ is going to break that down while I do other stuff. We're also, also, this is a V1 Superflux. Oddly enough, so is this. We're going to take the V1 Superflux, trim the cable short and splice on this V2 connector. So that's what we're going to do. Please, sir. May I have some more? I want some desk. All right, so the board is apart now, thankfully. Rail and the Fugazis down there. <laughs> We've got a Rarity V1 Superflux right here. Uh, do you want to do the honors of cutting the cable? Sure. All right, so if you could just bring this over to that bench, that'd be great. This is always a nerve wracking part because, you know, you can't uncut wires. Yeah. Is this gonna fit? Yeah, it's gonna fit. Oh, it's more appropriate. We are cutting. Oh, oh god. god, terrible. Projectile. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. So, and then we're gonna have to do this one also. There we go. All right, now fortunately, this seems to work. This is my old Thor box with the original batch Thor and uh, no fancy stuff and it doesn't, it's not together, it's not together. But either way, bench tester, got the connector on here, V1 motor, just ran through motor detection, values look good, and it works. And so that is good. So we're gonna line this up, that's about right. And we're just getting cable length, so it doesn't have to be dead perfect. Curve around here, and then the CAN bus wires are probably gonna sit right about there where that little bolt goes. Do a little extra work. So we tore this open, rewired it, changed the discharge and charge connectors, and added new balance wiring, and we also wired it for the X-Lite V4, because what was in here was an X-Lite V2. V2. So we went a couple of versions later, which is great. And so now this is finally done. With the new wiring, I'll be able to do cable terminations inside the box. And once those are done, we can be done. It's done. It looks incredible. A significant upgrade from my Flow Glider box that I had prior. Yeah the condition of my rear enclosure was despicable, so. Yeah, that was rough. It's it's in the garbage now. Goodbye. Bye. But uh, you want to turn it on, see how it looks? Hold sure. on, wait, before we do that. Oh, we got to do the Yeah, we got to do some of this action. Presentation matters. Yeah. All right, go for it. Okay. Hey, now. You're an all-star. Night Rider. Yeah, it's pretty. Gorgeous. So, 
you got to see the assembly of this box, how would you have uh, rated the uh, the use of this box as compared to the flow glider stuff? I mean, it came in fully assembled for the most part, which is something I didn't expect. And I thought the price, considering what everything is, was actually pretty awesome as well. Yeah, we had a fun conversation. We were trying to budget this out, and you were very surprised. I was. So. I didn't realize that was all in. I thought that was just for the enclosure. So yeah, this is definitely a, a cool way to go. and. Be nice to have better heat dissipation coming from somebody that would overheat quite easily. Yeah. Well, the flow glider box certainly wasn't doing you any favors. It wasn't. Flavors? Favors. <laughs> Neither. No Neither. flavor, no favors at no all. There's no flavor to the favor. I think this looks better than the than the CNC one. I you like saw it. one, the red, the red one over there. <laughs> Actually, I, I think this one's nicer. I like the look of it. Yeah. It, and uh, yeah, I did the wiring cable. This was actually a little easier to set up in the front than it was to do the back. Back's always kind of a, you know, balancing act with wires and all that. There was a lot going on back there. Yeah, but uh, this is, I gotta tell you. Ooh, that looks fun. Digging it. How's it going? It's going. What do we got here? What are the, talk us through the setup, Mr. Martin. We're, we're in assembly here. We assembling? Piecing everything together. What are the pieces? So we got the rails on the front and rear enclosure. We got the blocks on. Now we're uh, just getting the axle bolts in and the covers on there. What, what kind of blocks we got on here? We have uh, Auden Huff's pub blocks. Something of that nature. With extra steps. A derivative of Fugazi. the pub blocks. The Fugazis. We got the Fungineers box. It's fun. It's looking good. We got the fucking charge <laughs> port over here. What yes. kind of charge port is that, Mr. Martin? It's a two pin charge for it. Oh. That I wasn't expecting. Oh, wait. I lost a pin. What are you doing? I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, it's, do pins equal power? I guess not in this I world. It's not. Yeah, this, this looks like, is this a deer shit on the fucking pad over here? It could be a little wheel scorcher dirt from good old Hendersonville. Oh. It was a scorcher. You scorched your shits there. It was uh, rather hot there. Yeah. And, 90 uh, degrees. But now you got some uh, material in front that should not light on fire completely. Yeah, this is uh, what I could use down there, the old wheel scorcher. So it's nice to uh, have some better heat dissipation. Mm -hmm. This tire looks pretty fucking big. What kind of shit is this? It is a big tire. Big fucking tire. The typical BTG gang setup. No, oh, everything's a gang now. You got gang, gang. Hand, you got hand symbols. We do. There's an initiation yeah. as well. You gotta be careful. You kind of you got a bandana or something. I do. Big shit gang. Fantastic. You know there are no tubes in this tire. It says tubeless right here. Tubeless. Fantastic. Let's turn it on just for fucking shits and giggles. Shits and gigs. Deer shit and giggles. Let's see, we got some beeps. Beep. And then, oh, whoa, look at that. Oh, hey we got it in the rear. That's what I came here for. Can, can you show me the rear? We'll show, oh, bang. Oh, oh, whoa. Bango, bango. Look at that. We got a party in the rear. Fantastic. Business in the front. Hey, As what happened back? Done though. Yeah, I mean, I mean, with the new box and the Thor, you know, we're gonna set this up. Got a lot of power. Still got the meat pack in the rear. It's gonna be a bowl with a lot of castanas on it. Hell yeah! Alrighty. There we go. Ah! So, obey your thirst. Have some spark. Motor config. Current. Do. What are we doing here? One seventy-five. Yeah, that's right. Why not? Right? There we go. Acceleration temperature decreased zero percent, so we don't die out there on the hot days. BMS. No, no, no. Do not drop my fucking friend if you get a bit too hot in the rear. Please don't. Please don't do that. Signify us, but please do not drop anybody. Oh, interpolation ERPM at 250. Got it. Do it. All right. Anything else? Field weakening? What are you doing? 35. You do 35? Mm -hmm. I'm putting 30. Okay. <laughs> Don't touch it. Don't touch it. 750 on that. My least favorite part. IMU configuring. Oh, cool. It detected it. You can probably cut. This is fucking <laughs> rolling. All right. So we're here to review uh, Luna. <laughs> Short for lunatic. Right. No, no. You, this is your moment right now. You got to shine. Say <laughs> hi to everybody at home. We're starting this in the... In a darker room because you can really see the, the joyous lights. I didn't think that I would really dig the status light, but that was 
I was wrong there. That was a good idea. Yeah, that's that's cool. Definitely inspired me to take my Dremel out and destroy some cush pads. Yeah, there we go. So, how's this been for you? You know, uh, thermals has always been an issue for me. So, moving away from the hypercore naturally to this, you know, I didn't have any motor overheating, but of course it pushes those thermal issues to the controller. So moving to the Thor 300 and the box, as somebody who likes to ride spiritedly and I have my competitive moments, uh, I cannot overheat this thing actually. I haven't got it over 40 Celsius or about uh, 104 degrees. I've been super happy with the results of, you know, the Fungineer products. It's really been awesome and I love this box. Nice. Really glad to hear it. And yeah, so this is on the 12 volt lighting power thing. I, I, it's the end of my work day, so my brain is, is currently off. But um, this lighting wise, aside from the fact that it included a headlight and a status light, uh, getting the rear light to work was surprisingly easy. So it's a 12 volt strip, so it's just RGB. It's not RGBW, so it lacks a dedicated white channel. So it's not as bright as it could be if it had a dedicated white channel. However, when I use the five volt lighting setup that I usually do, like connected to a Fokker, um, I kind of, it took a while. I had, to, I had to audition data line resistors to kind of filter out the noise that would happen from the front to the rear. And I haven't had to do that at all with any of these. I put the tail light in, it works. I don't get any noise on the rear. And that, you know, as far as quality of build life, when you're putting these things together, that, that has meant a lot. So I, I appreciate that. But um, just performance wise, do you, do you feel it's any different than the Fokker you had in it before? Is it, does it behave the same, but it just runs a lot cooler? Certainly running a lot cooler. You know, with the Fokker, I had my motor amps at 150. So because I was able to raise them a little higher, at least confidently do it, you know, I certainly messed with putting it at 175 and 200. It was actually too much power. So I'm back down to about 185 now. So I certainly can, I feel like I have more power. You know, it's definitely, it's ripping and uh, super happy with the results. When you say you feel like you have too much power, what do you mean by that? So it could be some of my settings, but you know, having, I could feel in my roll settings and my turn tilt that I was breaking traction at certain points. So I certainly messed with my turn tilt and some aggression settings, but even at 200 motor amps, it, I, once I lowered it down a little more, it complemented those settings more. And I just felt that I had better traction and I had less wheel spin mm -hmm. and the results were just there at that point. Nice. It was a nicer ride. Yeah. That's that there is only so much torque that you can output from a motor before it, it just doesn't matter anymore. Cause yeah, you, you everything shifts bottlenecks. Right? Yes. So bottleneck used to be the hypercore. You move to a more massive motor bottleneck shifts to the controller because you can run more amps for higher torque, but the controller overheats, you address that. And then you feel like you have no more bottlenecks, but then you have the physical bottleneck of the, literal tire against whatever terrain you're you're running on so so that's something to consider practicality of power at a certain point yeah absolutely all right well thank you for your thoughts absolutely thank you for uh, helping me with this it's been uh, a game changer yeah this is <laughs> that's a fun word but this was uh the box was a was a pleasure to build with the few that i've done so far have have been really really a joy just make the cable Put it in there, plug stuff in, set it up, and you're done. And so, uh, of all the things, the products that that lead to less hassle in the build are, are often the ones that kind of stand out. But it, it, I'm glad to hear that functionally, it also seems to stand out. So that's great. Totally. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you as well. Thanks. All right. And uh, I think uh, I think that does it. Cut.